Hi there! I'm Lily and this is the Curatorial Knits Knitting Podcast. I am an art curator based in Northern California. I love knitting and I love the knitting community and this is a digital space where I catalog my knits, communicate what I'm working on, and hopefully enter into larger conversations about creativity and how we take care of ourselves by making beautiful things. Um, this episode is dedicated to all of the garments that I made for myself in the year 2023. I know it's well into 2024 at this point, but it's still January. I had a really, really full month um, with personal and works commitments, but I'm really excited to collect all of these beautiful things and kind of catalog them and comment on them and also offer some insights into how they've worn and how I'm wearing them. If you have any questions or comments on things, please do enter them into the comments below. Um, I have also linked all of the yarn and patterns in the description box, which you'll find by selecting the little arrow pointed down underneath this video. Um, just as a bit of kind of like level setting, I do have a lot of knits this year. Um, this was a pretty, this was definitely the most objects that I, that I created, um, in a year. I think there are, there are actually, um, 15 sweaters and, um, one shawl. And that is really because, um, I, I do love to knit. It's a really important kind of way that I take care of myself. And I also wanted to kind of answer some questions about how that kind of productivity is possible given that I also have two young and beautiful and awesome and hilarious children. Um, I have a great family life and um, I also try to get a few workouts in a week. Um, but really it's because of my commute. So. I work um, in San Francisco, I live in Oakland, and I have about an hour long commute each way when I go into the city. And that's really my primary knitting time. So that's, you know, up to two hours a day. And then I knit for probably an additional 90 minutes to two hours in the evenings before I go to sleep. Um, I also have Mondays where the institution that I work for is closed. I do a lot of personal admin on that day and I also get a solid block of uninterrupted knitting time while my kids are at school. So that's just a little bit of a background and I hope it also helps level set something that is really important to me in discussing my sweaters today, but also throughout the whole podcast and as I continue to catalog what I'm making, I hope that it's all, I'm definitely presenting it in the spirit of, and I hope that it is seen with the intention of being a space for uh, inspiration and not comparison. Um, one line that I grew up with and that I think is always <laughs> applicable for me and hopefully maybe for others as well is that there's no reason to compare the self with things outside of the self. Um, this is not a space for comparing my knits and what either you're making or would like to make. Um, I hope that it's a jumping off point for creativity, for color especially, I hear that quite often, um, and also for yarns and designers that might have slipped through the cracks or that you didn't catch um, that you might be interested in um, checking out. There's also a few cautionary tales. Not everything's a 10 out of 10, and I'm gonna try to be really honest about the objects that I've made, what's worked for me, what hasn't worked for me as well. So that's kind of the preamble. I really hope that this um, space of inspiration continues for you. Um, I like to call it kind of a waterfall. It's just this really almost like a cascade of different influences and ideas and we all kind of come in at different points in this great big waterfall of creativity and inspiration where we're impacting each other at many points down the stream. So with that, I am going to start off with my, um, I'm going to do this actually in kind of seasons. So I didn't take super great notes about when I cast things on versus when I cast them off, but I did really think of organizing this in terms of 
the seasons when they were knit. And this was a winter 2023 sweater. I actually applied, this is a test knit. It's the Lanark sweater by Rebecca Klo. And I applied for this test knit um, in the Christmas of 2022. And I started it in, I might have even started it in new on the New Year's Day of 2023. It is a zip, half zip um, sweater that is made out of fisherman's rib stitches, um, which creates this really nice wide ribbing. And one of my favorite things is actually how that flows into the narrow ribbing at the cuffs and at the hem. It's a really kind of elegant construction. I, as I mentioned, was a test knitter for this, and the yarn I used is La Bienna May's Cory Worsted, and it is one of my most worn and fam favorite garments of the year. It is incredibly versatile. It is super breathable. I usually do wear something underneath it. The Cory Worsted is not a super um, soft yarn. It's quite rustic, but I do think that it's also really, really breathable. So one of the things that happens a lot in my climate <laughs> is that it gets very, very chilly in the mornings and the evenings, but right around, you know, noon to four or five, it can get quite hot. And these are really, really wonderful garments for kind of managing that. And I've loved wearing it. Um, one thing that I think could be helpful if you're considering making a zipper sweater, I definitely recommend this one, for, first of all. Um, the construction is ingenious. It's very hard to like read the pattern and know what's gonna come next, but as soon as you're actually making it, everything makes sense. I really love the way that the pattern is written. I also was quite nervous about zipping or sewing in the zipper. And so what I did and what I encourage you to do if this is a stumbling block for you um, is I, I did outsource it. I took it to a tailor. And the reason I did that is because it was going to be the thing that stopped me. Zip, zo sewing in the zipper was going to stop me from wearing the garment. And I just thought, that's ridiculous. It wasn't that I really couldn't learn how to do it or I was too scared to learn how to do it. I wanted to make sure that I would wear this garment and I didn't feel like I had the bandwidth to make this, mo um, not modification, to make this move, if you will, to add this on to my construction in a way that really befitted the garment. I am not a great seamstress and so I took it over to a local tailor. It was a very, very reasonable, I was kind of shocked by um, how reasonable the cost was and I had them sew it in. And now I know that it's sturdy, it fits exactly how I want it to and I wear this at least once a week. So um, garment number one, 2023, the Lanark sweater by Rebecca Klo. The She's also known as the Crea Bea. So that's object number one. All right, next up we have my third Lento sweater. This is a top-down raglan sweater. It is pretty ubiquitous um, on the inner, in the um, knitting interwebs. It's knit at a very wide open gauge. My particular versions, this is as I mentioned my third, have all been knit with the Wandering Fox DK held with a mohair and that's because that's what I had on hand and I wanted this really kind of, I didn't want it to be quite as open as the pattern indicates. I will say though, I did not have enough yarn <laughs> to complete this sweater in the way that it was written. So you can see it's quite heavily cropped. Um, the sleeves are bracelet length and it's Great. I do enjoy wearing the sweater. I don't wear it that often, I think because it's so cropped. I also tried this high-low hem, which is now kind of stretched out and just like not my favorite thing. And that's a bit of a bummer. That said, I do think that if I were to do this again, I would just go up a needle size and make it a little bit more open. And I think it would be a bigger garment 
and I think I would wear it a lot more. Um, so this was a bit of a misstep. That said, it is really easy to throw on as I'm doing now, just over some leggings, um, and it's very, very soft. The reason that I've made so many of these is because I love this combination of yarns. I think that the Wandering Phlox um, Mohair Silk is one of my favorites. Theirs and um, Sandra Yarns Halo. So I'm struggling a little bit with the battery and the light today. Um, there were a couple of really bright lights shining in, um, so this may be a little bit more disjointed than my normal um, conversational podcast, but we're going to break it up. We're going to talk about each thing. I think the um, break here for my Lento sweater was just as I was discussing what I could have done, which was make this a little bit more open and it might be a little bit larger and a little bit more wearable, but I do really love the yarn, as I was saying, from Wandering Flock. And this is, I think this was actually the second garment that I cast off in 2023. And yeah, third Lento. I will probably make another one, frankly. It is a great basic raglan, and I did the folded over neckline. I think I have to say this was my favorite one of these that I did. I kind of feel like I nailed it. Um, some of my other ones had a little slant to them, so I'm going to celebrate the wins where I find them and um, be excited about this. Maybe I'll pull it out more, actually. It's looking pretty good on camera here. So yeah, on to the next. Okay, so this is by far one of my favorite sweaters that I've ever made. It is the Azucena sweater and it's in the La Bienne May worsted book. It's now though, I think, available on Ravelry. And I did make it in La Bienne May Cory worsted. It is a really, for my body, beautifully fit and fitted circular yoke colorwork sweater. Um, I have quite a few of these um, this year and maybe in fact I'll try, no, no, we're staying with the seasons. I was gonna say maybe I do all my yokes together, but um, we are gonna stay with the seasons and this was a kind of winter to spring knit last year. It is so satisfying doing this color work, especially in this yarn because it just marries so well together. It's quite rustic. This is the same yarn that I made the Lanark sweater in, so it has a little bit of a prickle factor that's definitely present. I usually wear a, at least a tank top on underneath this, but it is also one of the most versatile sweaters that I own. I have worn this to the office. I've worn this with a blazer. I've worn this over uh, leggings and went golfing for 18 holes. Um, it is, like the Lanark as well, really great at um, regulating temperature and I'm just a really huge, huge fan of this piece. As I said, the color work itself um, is really lovely. I was able to really experiment with the Cory Worsted palette in a way that was really satisfying. I have this kind of ochre-y um, I don't know how you would describe that, like a golden yellow. Um, and with the turquoise and the pink, it really, um, yeah, I just really, really love it. I think that it's a low contrast, but high impact color grouping. And I'm really, really happy with this piece. Um, and this is, again, the Azucena. I added these um, kind of racing stripes to the um, bottom ribbing and to the cuffs, which I think give it a little bit of a sporty look. And I quite enjoy that. I'm trying to think what else is, what I love about it. I think it's the fit. And honestly, it's also the gauge. So I've mentioned before that I tend to be quite a loose knitter, particularly in the round. And with this particular pattern um, and this particular design though, I was spot on for gauge and I feel like I didn't have to do any of the modifications that I usually have to do. So um, I am usually 
fairly experimental, um, both in swatching and as the garment is coming together where I try on my garments very, very frequently. Um, I measure my stitch gauge very frequently and I often um, change the stitch numbers in order to make garments fit me and to also fit my knitting. And that's something that I really didn't have to do at all here. It was a really straightforward knit and I felt really comfortable and confident with my um, with the way that the yarn worked up and my knitting style. So it was like a really nice mashup or um, like a great coupling of the way I like to knit and the materials and then the pattern. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can say about this piece except it's fabulous and I, I don't see this often um, out in the wild, uh, but I really, really recommend it. I think the way the pattern is written is really beautiful. And again, I do think that the way that the color work is done and the increases are done within the color work is really, really beautifully fit. Uh, I'm able to have like quite a bit of arm reach. A lot of color work yokes can be really tight. And I think it's also a matter of row gauge. Like this is a really, really kind of perfect compilation of how I think one of these sweaters can can fit beautifully. It feels like a necklace. It's really easy to move in. Like I said, um, I actually play golf in this one. So <laughs> two thumbs way up um, and we'll keep going. Okay, so from one of my most worn sweaters to now, this is, I would say, one of my least worn sweaters and I don't even know why. This is Ready Set Raglan, which is from a the Ready Set Raglan book. It is Explorer Knits and Fibers, beautiful Rockies DK, held with their alpaca surrey to create this lovely marl. I absolutely love the color. It is so soft. It's like wearing a cloud, and I never wear this sweater. <laughs> um, I think actually the reason behind that is nothing to do with the pattern or the yarn or even the fit. I think this fit is great and it's very easy wearing. It should be something I throw on all the time. But I cast this on and knit it actually when I was really ill. Um, I was super, super sick and I had been training for this marathon and I really wanted to be running and I couldn't and I was working on this sweater and I think it was it was very helpful to have this kind of outlet and feeling like I was doing something even while I rested. Um, but I feel like when I look at it, I think of that moment. And so maybe that's why I'm not wearing it. Because when I say I'm not wearing it, I mean quite literally, I've had this now for a year. I don't remember wearing this sweater. And that's really tough when you think about it. So. It's not great for the sweater and it needs to kind of live a life. I have a friend who I think would look so beautiful in it. She has this beautiful kind of really light, rusty, strawberry blonde hair. I think this would look stunning on her. So I think that that's part of this process too, of reflection is really thinking about, you know, I have this beautiful thing, I don't wear it, and that's okay. I can still recognize that it was important for me to make it and still respect that process and maybe do something else with it. And I, I'm gonna be talking a little bit more about that also. Um, I think it's really important to recognize that process knitting is, it can be its own joy. And even if that, that final product isn't something we reach for all the time, the process and the making of it can still be super important and valuable. And um, yeah, I think we'll talk about that more. But I do love this sweater. The uh, especially the mohair or not mohair the Surrey alpaca colorway Killarney Park is just so so beautiful. Um, yes, I love it, and I can respect it and appreciate it, and it doesn't mean I have to always wear it. So that was a kind of quick rundown, but we're gonna keep it snappy. Like I said, we have sixteen things to go through, so on to the next. Next up, we have a complicated feelings sweater. 
This is the Marseille sweater by Petite Knit, and it is knit up in my um, a really fun but kind of frustrating base, <laughs> um, Hello Mello yarns, which had really different kind of variations in the colors, and some of it was kind of splotchy. I held it with, but I love the tone of the color, so I, I'm really glad I had it. I held it with a strand of the Tin Silk Mohair from Santa's Garn in their um, kind of apple green colorway. And then this is leftover from my Lanark, um, more of the blue. Um, is that right? Or it might be more Hello Mellow. Sorry, this will be correct in the description box, I swear. Um, this is probably more of the Hello Mellow in their navy and then I think I ran out and had to use on the sleeves and had to use some of the La Bienname but it's also held with the same mohair throughout so it's very consistent in terms of the color. Um, this is a giant sweater. It's meant to be a giant sweater and I do wear it pretty often. I have um, I have petite knit thoughts. I think a lot of us have petite knit thoughts. Uh, obviously she's you know, ubiquitous. I think that her designs can be incredibly um, well written, super helpful. They're basic for a reason, and I get that. And it's also a really identifiable aesthetic when it comes to this giant kind of oversized pattern. I do think this looks pretty good. It's, it's again, it's quite big. It's kind of creased. Sorry about that. Um, and I've enjoyed wearing it. I think that it makes me, I guess part of my hesitation with this is that I think that, or I've, I've heard though I've not experienced, that the grading for things that are meant to be this oversized can be prohibitive at the larger sizes, right? So this works for me because I'm standard size. I will also say it would work, I think, with these proportions with less ease. I mean, this is like almost two sweaters, like this isn't even negative ease yet to here. So this is like almost two sweaters worth of yarn. Also, that's a lot of yarn to use for one project. So I wear it. I've kind of, in, I enjoy the act of wearing it. It's, it's slouchy. It's oversized. I actually think that the sleeve is also really nicely done. I was happy with the drop shoulder. I could probably stand to put an elastic in it. Um, and yeah, but it's not one of my favorite things I ever made, for sure. Um, but again, like I said, it's kind of, it is something that I wear. I do really like the color. <laughs> um, it's nice and bright, but doesn't feel outlandish. Um, I don't know. I would not knit it again. I think that's like the standard, actually. Like there's certain things that I would definitely make again, knit again, I think could be really interesting to experiment with, and that's just not how I feel about this one. Yeah. Okay, make again for sure, however. <laughs> um, this is the Easy Bee by Caitlin Hunter. I absolutely love this sweater. It's so fun to wear. I made this in Ritual Dyes Sprite Base as the main color, and I knit this actually at a loose gauge. My gauge was a little bigger, and I went with it. Um, I did make the smaller, the smallest size for the cast on of this V-neck collar. Sorry, I did not change out my my shirt underneath. Um, but it is a great recommendation. Um, I think if I had knit my proper size, this just would have been too big for me. And I really, really like the way it sits, the way it falls. I, the color work is all scraps and, um, some, uh, spin cycle dream state, which is their worsted weight. So Sprite is technically a sport weight yarn, but I knit it at a worsted weight gauge. It means though that for me, this is very, very wearable in my climate. It's super comfortable. It's really easy to throw on and feel very confident in. And I love this Rambouillet. It's, it's been wearing great. There's a few pills, but it's very easy to depill. And I think that it looks super clean and fresh. And I just, 
truly, truly love this. I knit this piece because I was so inspired by seeing so many out in the wild at the Rose City Yarn Crawl this time last year, or in rather in a few weeks, in February of last year, and I came back and just instantly cast it on. I used stash yarn. It wasn't something that I super planned out, and it actually turned out really beautifully. I'm, I'm really happy uh, with this piece. All right, we're gonna keep going with the springy vibe. It's actually all the way to summer. This is the Tulsta Tea by Rebecca Klo. And this is the first Tulsta that I made. I made a second one and I never wear this. <laughs> and I'm not totally sure why. I think it's honestly because there should be, in my mind, there should be another stripe. So the stripes are not laid out in the pattern. This was my application. It is no fault of the pattern whatsoever. It's beautiful yarn. This is Magpie Fibers Silk, and it is swanky, and it is stunning, and it is full of drape, and it just feels so beautiful and light. But the, it just seems like there should be another stripe here, right? Like, isn't that kind of off and weird? I don't know. I want to love it. I just don't wear it. Maybe this summer I'll give it another couple tries, but it just didn't happen. So, you know, I'm being very honest <laughs> in my appraisals and uh, yeah, we'll see. Hopefully I um, get a little bit more wear out of this or, or figure out a way to wear it, maybe with a scarf or something um, that makes it a little bit easier because it does feel very good and I loved making it. It was a really, really fun knit. But yeah, just don't wear this one that much. Yeah, Tulsa number one. And we're back with the second Tulsta and some very different lighting. Um, I did realize that it was 4.30 and I had to make dinner and pick up children. Um, all of that has happened. <laughs> Um, it's the same day, but very different vibes. Um, you will hear some giggling and potentially screaming from downstairs where the kids are hanging out. I, though, am going to finish this. I swear I'm going to finish this today. It is going to happen. So, this is the second uh, Tulsa tea that I made. It's in Undine, which is a really beautiful yarn from also from Ritual Dyes. Um, the same dyer in Portland who, and beautiful, beautiful shop. Um, they also made that Sprite, which was in my Easy V, and I just wholeheartedly recommend their yarns. I have had such positive experiences with them. I've made, it, I think, four different hats, um, all out of Ritual Dyes yarn so far, and it's just all of their their aesthetic is beautiful and their color selection and I really really love the fibers that they choose. So Undine is a cotton and linen blend. This is held double for the DK um, weight version of the the Tolsta T. And the thing that I really do like about this pattern, even though as I mentioned, I don't wear my other one a ton slash really that much. Um, what I love about the pattern itself is that it feels a lot more like um, uh, not necessarily a recipe, but a, a jazz composition, right? It's a place to riff. And once you have that structure down for like a basic t crew neck t-shirt, it's really easy to riff on it. And so included in the pattern are a lot of different points of departure and inspiration, tangents to take this, this journey. And I used um, a kind of eyelet version, and it's just simple yarn overs and knit two togethers, and it creates, I think, a really wearable, fun garment. It's kind of surprising because I did knit this simply to kind of get yarn out of stash, <laughs> to be super honest. I wasn't, I didn't have high expectations for this knit, but I actually end up wearing this much more than the other Tolsta that I made. So highly, highly recommend the yarn. I really think it's a good fit for this application. And yeah, this is just a great t-shirt. I wear this a lot. Um, I've worn it, I think what makes it 
more kind of valuable and useful than the other that I made is that I've worn it in lots of different settings. So I've worn it like to the beach, literally like over my swimsuit. And I've also worn it like under a blazer and it looks fantastic. And so this is just kind of a surprise hit in a way. I wasn't expecting the most from it and it's turned into a really well-loved piece and a big part of my summer wardrobe. So I might make another one. They have Undine in some really pretty colors. I will say that it is not the, mo it was not the most fun for me to knit with. I'll be super honest. Um, it's kind of stiff, a little crunchy. It blocks beautifully. Um, I wonder if you did give it a good soak and wash before you knit with it, that might help because it feels much softer and smoother on the body than it did when I was knitting it right off the, um, the skein after I caked it up. But that's just something to think about. I dig it. Um, and yeah, that's my Tulsa Tea number two. Okay, and we're back with another t-shirt that I don't really wear. <laughs> but I love and was totally worth making. This is the super, super stunning Miracina. Is that how you say it? Miracina um, by Caitlin Hunter. Again, all the details are down below, you guys. I'm, I, you know, they'll all be links. It's all, all the info is there in the order that I talk about the, the pieces in. And this was so fun to knit. I'm so glad I knit it. I hardly ever wear it. <laughs> um, I loved doing these little beautiful lace panels. I loved the cable com com combined with the color work. That's something I hadn't ever seen before. I would totally love to do that again. I think it's super smart and interesting. I really dig it. I really do. It is just not super usable. I don't know why. Um, it looks pretty cute on right now. Um, it's very short. I got bored and stopped. <laughs> That's so dark but true. Um, I just didn't really want to knit anymore. And it's twisted ribbon. I was like, I'll just do a little one and a half inch of twisted ribbon and call it a day. I mean, it looks kind of cute, honestly, with these high-waisted leggings. And I could see this definitely over a dress or a skirt that I don't currently own. Um, so maybe that's something that I investigate. But yeah, it's really, it's really fun and cute. And the fact that I don't wear it that often actually in this iteration, it just doesn't bother me. It was well worth the knit. Um, so I mentioned this earlier, we're going to talk about it a lot with my tessellated pullover. There are lots of reasons to knit things besides wanting to wear them. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but it's actually kind of important to me because sometimes it's about the experience and the creation of the object and we can kind of have that object and enjoy it and really like love it and appreciate it for what it is outside of our wearing it in the world. Again, you don't have to buy into that. It's just kind of something that I think is interesting to explore and think about because it opens me up to being able to knit more things and have those experiences without attaching myself so often to like, how does this, if it doesn't fit into my wardrobe, like, do I really have any business knitting this? Like for me, yes, because for me, my knitting is kind of an, not just about what I wear. It's, it's this kind of larger exploration of, of making things and experimenting and finding ideas. And, and they definitely always influence what I do next. So anyway, this is, I said by Caitlin, the, the pattern is by Caitlin Hunter, the Miserina. The yarn is, this is La Bienna May's Sport, Merino Sport. And I, the contrast color is a really, really beautiful skein of every rose, which felt very appropriate from a spin cycle. And it just worked out really, really nicely. And I, I do enjoy it, even though I don't wear it. So there, <laughs> okay, we're gonna keep plugging on. 
Okay, I know this is technically a sweater that I wore in my last episode of the season, so you might be thinking, oh, Lily, that's a winter slash fall knit. It's not. I cast this on in the summer <laughs> because, so that's how I think of it. I cast it on in preparation for Rhinebeck because I wanted to knit something in wool that I had bought at the previous Rhinebeck before going to Rhinebeck this year. Um, I didn't finish it in time because I ran out of yarn, got more yarn at <laughs> this year's edition of Rhinebeck. It didn't match. So it is also um, quite short in the arms and I added lots of extra contrasting colors to kind of supplement. And I don't know, I talk about this piece quite a bit in my last podcast. I agree it looks very good and especially worn this way kind of simply and straightforwardly. That said, I cannot wear this really with a coat because of the where the color work ends. Um, it's quite low in a way, and this is a really big difference between this and say the Azucena, where we had this really easy fit in the shoulders and the arms. I think it's because I have quite wide shoulders. Um, I swam a lot. I was on a bunch of swim teams, and then I used to be a, um, a beach lifeguard. And so I was doing lots and lots of long distance <clears throat> and sprint swimming. And so I think as a kind of late adolescent and young adult, I grew some really big shoulders that have stuck around and that's great. I feel very strong, but it also <laughs> means that like this sweater feels like my shoulders should be two inches in. It's the right size, but the actual structure of where my shoulders go doesn't feel right in the sweater. Um, and it also means that like, I can't really raise my arms without it bunching up. And so it's really hard to wear under anything. Um, and so I don't, I wear it standalone and in this climate, that's, you know, fine. I can kind of wear this instead of like a fleece or something or like a, a puffer jacket. Um, but it's, you know, I think it's really pretty, but for some reason wearing it doesn't like bring me a ton of joy and that's fine. Um, coming up close and for the color work, you can kind of see it's really beautiful. It's by the Petite Knitter. I don't think I even said this is the Sonder sweater. And I also didn't love the, um, the knitting of the color work was totally great and joyful, but the short roads rows, I kind of, I had to redo them a couple times. I didn't think it was a super clear explanation of how they worked in with the color work. Um, so yeah, your experience may vary, but this was just not a 10 out of 10 for me. Um, the yarn though, absolutely was. So this is Dyingbrook Farms Thin Sheep Wool, and I love it. I deeply, deeply love it. It is super, super, super soft and really easy. This is on bare skin and it feels fantastic. It's warm, it's insulating. There's also this really wonderful sheen to it and it has a tiny, I wouldn't even call it a halo, I don't know. It has a bit of this kind of halo. I don't know if our lighting's good enough so you can see. Just a little bit of haze and fluff but nothing that will pill or that you'll have to pick off. It just really works beautifully for color work. So I have some more of the um, darker colored gray, which was from last year's clipping. And then I also have a gray that was over dyed with indigo, which I got that I'm really excited about doing um, something small, probably maybe a cowl or a hat in this um, yarn because it is so nice next to skin and I really enjoyed working with the yarn. And yeah, that's my Saunders sweater. On to the next. Okay. So I made two cardigans this year and they both, they could not be more different from one another. Um, this is Please Don't Ask by Isabel Kramer. And 
I love the construction of this sweater. It has a um, really nice kind of cap sleeve with a raglan, so I think that's called a compound raglan. And it sits really nicely. I should wear this all the time, and I just don't. Um, I had some issues with the yarn. I had worn a crossbody bag, and it wore a really rough spot in the yarn, and it was it's kind of odd. So. This is a combination of a sock yarn that I was experimenting with when I was casting on a lot of different colors for my twig sweater, and it it's a um, yeah fingering nylon merino blend. It was a beautiful color, hand dyed locally. I mean, it looked great, and then I paired that with the Lamb and Kid Birdie in the color Valari, which is a very it's a very lightweight um, alpaca uh, silk blend, Surrey alpaca silk blend. And I, I think while the colors marry beautifully, the textures just do not. And for some reason, I got this spot where pieces of not the birdie, but actually the sock yarn were like, had frayed. It had like come untwisted and was like opening up the stitches and it was really kind of gnarly. So I had to do a bunch of duplicate stitching and it kind of kind of turned me off. Um, and I haven't even put buttons on it, which is a combination of not being driven to wear it and also just straight up laziness. Even though I do love this button band, like there's so many empirically like on paper I feel like this is a great sweater. It was fun to knit for sure. It was it was pretty fast for a cardigan that was basically DK light DK weight um, cardigan, and I loved the pattern. I thought it was written really straightforwardly. Um, I did most of this knitting on the train, and it for some reason it went really really fast. But I just don't wear it that often, so I don't know. Maybe community of accountability. <laughs> I will put my buttons on and figure myself out because I do, I do get it. Like I like it. I just don't wear it. Um, so we'll see. I don't know. This was another piece that I made potentially with the anticipation of, of wearing it at Rhinebeck. Um, but then some other things came into my life. So, um, I think now, oh, I'll talk about the other cardigan I cast on. That's what's up next. Okay. So I cast this on also in and around the like, I won't say drama, but the like pressure of my twigs, um, which is a beautiful pattern by Junko Okamoto, which I will absolutely finish this year. I want to finish it before my birthday because I cast it on on my birthday. So I think that is very apropos. I'm almost done with the body. Don't worry, things are happening. Um, but when I was kind of in the middle of that growing and growing and growing, I felt like I needed uh, instant gratification knit. <laughs> and I had a bunch of knit collage hanging out and so I cast on this incredible kaleidoscope cardigan. I don't think of it as a cardigan. I wear it and use it like a, um, what's it called? I wear it like a jacket. And frankly, I think it is a jacket. Uh, I have one button. I put it on and then didn't end up using it because it kind of made the um, crocheted edging here roll kind of weirdly. So I just have been wearing it open. I quite like it. <laughs> um, obviously it's not like a instant classic, like something I go to all the time. It has a lot of personality. Um, there's a lot going on, but it's very like art mom fun. And that's kind of part of who I am. So I do, I do quite like it and I enjoy its, um, big personality. I made some uh, like changes to the pattern um, only in that I think they have you change colors a lot less frequently um, and I just went for it. So we have the cloud spun which is the 
um, this dusty pink and dusty blue. And then I also used, um, I think it's called Mermaid's Dream. And this is another, this dark navy blue is another um, cloud spun. And then I also used lots of the wildflower, um, which is the yarn that's made of fabric. So it's here and here. And one of the things that was really fun about this knit and made it so rewarding to do as I was working on the twigs is that there's so much improvisation. Um, you know, the twigs pattern is really intricate and it's very kind of fully present, teeny tiny needles, <laughs> um, small gauge knit. And you really, it's exacting and that's really wonderful and it's one of the joys of that knit. And with this, I was really open and experimental and I liked the idea of using different, similar color tones, but different textures and different fabrics. So I have some really parallel colors, but in very different renditions, right? So we have this like fun, dusty pink, and then right after it, instead of using that dusty pink again, I use the same color tone, but in the wild flower, which is the um, fabric yarn. And so we do the same thing again here with this blue compared to this blue. Um, so from afar, it's kind of almost hard to tell, especially because this lighting is quite poor. Um, but I think it works. I think it works. Um, and I really dig it. And it was a really great way to keep moving and experimenting and feeling like my creativity was flowing even as I was in this kind of hyper focus moment with um, the other knit. So that is my kaleidoscope party. Oh, I, I just love this knit so much. This is my sheep camp. It is kind of like a love letter to knitting for me. I feel so much joy and sense of accomplishment with this knit. And it is by the Native Knitter. Um, she has also now a really beautiful partnership with um, Verity, the brand, um, and her knitwear is just really, really stunning. I love this knit. It is, I think, the perfect introduction to color work. Um, if you have never knit a color work sweater before and you're keen to do so, I absolutely positively recommend the sweater. First of all, the fit is fab. It's really, really a I think a fully color work um, sweater that fits a lot of different kinds of bodies really well. If you go on the Ravelry pages, there are there's such an absolutely inspiringly beautiful array of colors and sizes and applications of this pattern, and it. Even though I didn't knit this as a cal, um, no one I knew was knitting this at the same time as me, I know so many knitters who have found such deep joy in this pattern. And I think it's for a few reasons. <laughs> um, first of all, it does allow for a lot of creativity. Um, for example, it's actually a two color work pattern usually, um, and I made it into a three color work pattern, and that was not a massive, like, shift or change. It was very easy to do. Um, I simply did a little kind of one by one pattern up here, um, which is which is exactly what you would have done to sequence into your different color. I have, there are no points where I'm holding more than two colors at the same time. I just added a stripe um, of my main color in two different places and it really creates that cohesion so many opportunities for creativity with this knit. Um, the reason I think it's such a great first timer or introductory color work sweater is because it absolutely trains you, I think, to read your knitting. Um, the floats are quite short, so you're not having to deal with that. I don't think I ever caught a float on this one. Um, and you're able to see really easily where you're gonna go next, right? It's a super consistent pattern. You can memorize it, you know where you are. 
I just think there's so much great confidence building that can come from knitting this pattern. Um, I knit this from stash yarn in a kind of whirlwind. <laughs> um, I was cleaning out my yarn cabinet and just kind of reorganizing everything. And this incredible color from Farmer's Daughter Fibers, which is their um, yak base. It's absolutely so fun to wear. It's super, super soft, really warm, but not in any way suffocating. Um, this beautiful brownish, not brownish, maybe like gray toned purple um, fell out <laughs> of the bin it was in next to a scrap of my um, navy that I had used. This is the La Bienna May um, uh, Winterfell navy, which has a little bit of a kind of cool green tone to it as well. And then this really stunning sock yarn from um, Chelsea Fiber Co, which I got as kind of a random kit. It was a part of um, my summer solstice box that I got from Bed of Roses. And the three of them came together instantly I was like, how can I make a pattern with these? I love sheep camp. Wait, that's only two colors. What if I made it three? It kind of just all happened at once. And um, it's definitely just one of the most satisfying project to like project planning to process to product <laughs> um, experiences because I love wearing it. I think it looks great on. I think that it really speaks to that sense of creativity. It looks really different, but also it's not like calling too much attention to itself, I feel like. Um, I wear it with a long kind of flowing skirt. I wear it with jeans. Um, I just, I love everything about my sheep camp sweater. I definitely want to make more. Um, I have like five uh, fantasy sheep camps. Um, and whenever, in particular, I think when I see yarn that I really want with its mate, like when I saw these and I was like, oh, you two belong together. Um, that's when I feel like the sheep camp's a great opportunity to do that experiment and to figure that out. Um, I think my kids are playing pirates, which is one of my favorite games that they play. But if you hear a lot of like, our me ladies. Um, <laughs> sorry, but that's what's going on. Um, yeah, so this is my sheep camp. Um, I could not love it more. I am so deeply um, grateful to, to the folks who I saw wearing it at um, Rhineback the first year um, that I went in 2022. I'm so grateful to Jackie and Carmen who've made beautiful renditions of this. Um, they, their beautiful podcast is um, the, mean, uh, the Knitting a Good Yarn, and I absolutely, I love it. What can I say? It's um, a really special piece in my heart. I also wore this on the first day of Rhinebeck this year, and I was really, um, I don't know, it just has so many good memories because of that. I, I hugged a lot of great people I hadn't met in person before um, wearing this sweater, so... So many positive vibes for this piece. Yeah, love it. Okay, so from one Rhinebeck sweater to another, this from my sheep camp to my tessellated. Um, this is the tessellated pullover by Andrea Mowry. I am shocked that I only knit one Andrea Mowry pattern last year. I think the year before I knit like three something like that. Um, but this is a really awesome mosaic knit. Oh, hello. Sorry about that. One of the pirates came in. <laughs> um, that was my four year old and he's awesome. Um, anyway, so yes, the tessellated pullover was my only Andrea Mowry sweater last year. It was her Rhinebeck sweater. She designs a sweater each year for Rhinebeck. And this is a process knit for me um, because not only of the kind of making of the work and the selection of the yarn was a really joyful and interesting process, but it was also about the community I was knitting it with. And this is where I'm going to come back to 
the, the fact of the matter is I don't wear this sweater all that often. I think it's really cute. I think it's fun. It's, it's definitely like striking. It's very different, but I just don't wear it that often. Um, and that's okay. It's like totally okay with me. Um, because I loved making it, I loved seeing it in my closet, on my sweater shelves. Um, I loved, I loved making it in the round, <laughs> I will say, for some reason. So this is knit bottom up. I did corrugated ribbing on the bottom because I love corrugated ribbing. Um, <laughs> I think it looks so good at this gauge. Um, and then it's mosaic knit in the round and you use three colors. So you're using a color changing yarn. I use Spin Cycles Moonbeams, which is the custom color for Moondrake Yarn Company. And then I am used, I used Moondrake's own um, Fua Fua, which is their fluffy base with merino and cashmere as my fluffy yarn. And then my main color, oh here, this is an easier way to see it. Okay, so there's my Spin Cycle, there's my Fua Fua Fluff, and then my main color is the Dark Navy, which is in the color Midnight, also from uh, Moondrake. They have dyed the Spin Cycle yarn, so it's the exact same yarn um, dyed by Moondrake. Um, the actual process of knitting it, again, I quite liked it in the round. Knitting this flat, felt like it took forever. I didn't know how or why. It wasn't even that much knitting. So it's bottom up, as I mentioned. Um, I did get kind of worried about that and so did lots of measuring and lots of trying on. Um, and I actually kept my cast on edge, a provisional cast on edge on the bottom. And I did add a little bit um, onto the bottom of the sweater just to make sure that it hit where I wanted it to, which was kind of right at my hip bones. Um, it's a great, it's a great sweater. Um, and part of this process knit for me was definitely knitting it as a cow, right? Knitting it in community is part of that process. And that's kind of one of the things I want to get at a little bit with celebrating the process knit and just acknowledging that like not everything you knit has to like fit perfectly into one aesthetic or one idea of you or has to be something that you reach for every other day. I think it's okay to have some sweaters that are really meaningful and that knitting them meant something to us. And also they can just be, they can just exist. Um, kind of like the Miserina that I was talking about, right? Like it was a really important thing and process for me to knit this sweater. And I'm so glad I did it and did it in community and felt really excited about it. And the fact that it mostly sits on my shelf is still okay with me. Um, and I kind of, yeah, I want us to, to be able to, or I want myself at least to be able to not feel bad about that or feel like there was some sort of loss or sense of sense of loss or waste or anything that comes from that because the actual act of making this was in and of itself really important and I'm really glad that I did it. So that is my tessellated pullover. Okay, <laughs> one more Rhinebeck sweater. Um, this was what I called my sneaky test knit. I technically wasn't a tester, but I got to preview knit this for Rebecca Klo. Um, again, the um, Crea Bea Knitting Podcast. Um, this is stick season, and I love this sweater <laughs> so much. I am so glad I kind of followed my instincts um, and jumped on the train to um, pester. <laughs> to pester Rebecca till she let me in the desk. Um, it has a fantastic textured yoke. Um, it's a drop shoulder construction with this wonderful detail here. I am currently test knitting another piece from by Rebecca with, I think a, it's a very similar construction, but it's all over cables. And I really, really love this fit. Um, I did do some modification um, 
or no, it wasn't, I didn't modify. I blocked, that's right. So I did lots of blocking to make sure that my sleeve count was going to be correct because my, my gauge was spot on, but I found the armholes to be, I was worried that they were gonna be quite too deep, but after blocking, um, steam blocking, and then doing the count as instructed, I think it worked out great. Um, I really, really love the detail of the cable or the ribbing that goes all the way down the side here and goes into the two by two ribbing on the bottom. I love the folded collar, um, just a, a great knit and also a really, really useful one. <laughs> Um, viewers of the podcast will probably remember, um, the space that I work in, um, is an open, like formally industrial space and it is super, super hard to keep heated. <laughs> and I love wearing this at work actually. Um, it is really, really warm and, um, I wear it with some like kind of cool army, like carpenter pants. Um, and I feel both slightly more cool um, and very warm. <laughs> I feel warm and look cool. That's what I think anyway. Um, yeah, this is a great pattern. I knit it in Issachar's tweed, which I highly recommend. I think it's a really great fit for this pattern because it is really lofty, um, and it has some really nice texture and it, I think it just is a really good fit for um, this uh, kind of ribbing texture at the top. And it makes um, it makes it just feel really, um, I don't wanna say like heirloom, but it makes it feel really timeless to me. I feel like it's a, it's a classic sweater and I really enjoy wearing it a lot. Um, highly recommend. I have a few of these planned also. <laughs> um, I'd like to make one which Rebecca has done without the sticks. Um, and in a um, really uh, bright, like kind of cornflower blue, um, also for ritual dyes, which I think would be really fun. Um, and I have another one kind of planned in like a really, really dark, dark um, green, which I think could be very cool as well because you wouldn't necessarily see, you'll see the definition um, of the texture um, without having it be like too overwhelming. So, Loved, loved making this and yeah, we're almost there. Okay, gonna keep going. Okay, y'all, this is my instant crush. Um, it instantly flew on and off my needles at the end of last year. I cast it on after Rhinebeck, which is the second week of October and I finished it before Thanksgiving. Um, it is genuinely one of the most joyful knits. It was so much fun and the, the touch of this is just beyond. So this is knit in the Lamb and Kid um, Birdie Held Double, and it creates this really beautiful, beautiful texture. Um, the pattern is, as I mentioned, or maybe didn't, um, it's Instant Crush by Hohi Locatelli, and it has a raglan. So it's a color work raglan. If you check out this pattern, um, it's, the, the charts I thought were really intimidating when I first downloaded the pattern and was going through and trying to kind of find my way around. I was like, oh no. Um, but if you just focus on your size, I think it's a lot more manageable. So just don't worry if you are excited about this pattern. Um, don't worry about anybody except yourself. Just like find your, find your size, follow your bliss, like you've got this. Um, I really, really enjoyed making this piece and I really like wearing it and it is definitely a point of inspiration for me. I am excited about using, um, the format of this. Sorry, the pirates are back. <laughs> um, I'm excited about using the kind of, um, template for this and, um, changing up some of the um, uh, pattern motifs for maybe like a Christmas style sweater sometime this coming year. Um, I really, really loved making this. And also I just shout out to Lamb and Kid because these colors are so fun to wear. Um, and they're really sophisticated and they keep it really 
um, crisp and fresh. Um, I feel, feel really good in this one. Um, and yeah, that's the Instant Crush. I will, again, I'll link down below. Um, but the colors for this are... Oh my goodness, am I going to be able to do it? My navy blue is Dean. Um, the This is, I believe, Miel or Honey. Um, and then uh, Frayed Jeans for the blue. And... Yeah, for the lighter blue, that is. Um, and one moment, I'm gonna make sure that all the pirates are doing okay down there. And then there's just one more thing to, to, to talk about. We can wrap it up. All right, here we go. And finally, we, we come to my completed shawl, um, the only shawl I made um, for myself, at least, this year. This is the um, Fleur Shawl by Melissa. Uh, Kudro and it is absolutely stunning. It's made in her Sonder yarn, um, the Grace base and the held with the Halo base. And um, the Halo is in Bonjour Hello, and the Grace is in um, I think it's pronounced Tuslak. Uh, it is absolutely one of my favorite items that I made. I have the yarn for my second. It was knit as part of the Fleur Along, which was the cal hosted by Jackie and Carmen of Knitting a Good Yarn once again. And like, let's see, how does that look? I've worn it so many different ways. I really like it kind of on the side as a kerchief. Um, I've worn it, I wear it honestly like while I'm knitting in bed. <laughs> as like a little bed jacket. Um, it looks so, it's looking really nice actually with this green, but my favorite is actually wearing it with navy. It's a perfect pairing um, with, with, and I have quite a lot of navy in my, in my closet, so I think it just adds this wonderful pop of brightness and tonality um, when it's paired with a deep dark navy, almost black. Um, and, ah, oh, I loved making this, but it was, really enlightening <laughs> because um, it's a lot of garter stitch and it just keeps getting bigger. <laughs> and so as someone who doesn't make a lot of shawls, there was this sense of it like kind of never ending and it just kept growing and growing and growing. Um, and I'm sure if you knit a lot of shawls, you're like, of course, you start very small and you end very big. Like this is normal for a triangle shawl. Um, but it was a it was a first for me. So I again I really do want to cast on another one of these because I do think it would be also really useful. Like I said, I wear this all the time. It's incredibly warm, it's incredibly soft. Um and I just really, really enjoy it, um, both as a product and as the process. Um and now like just to kind of you know, wrap things up. Um, I, again, I really hope that this, you found this, if anything, just inspiring and in, in no way um, uh, daunting, even though looking at this pile over here, <laughs> I'm actually daunted. Um, and I'm really curious to see how 2024 goes. Um, I've actually finished two different sweaters this month, um, one which has been on the needles for a very long time, um, and one which was a, a kind of New Year's Day cast on, both of which were knit for very specific um, outfits, which is different for me, um, and that's been rewarding, but I'm not sure it's going to be something that I, you know, that stays with me all year, um, but it's been really, really a fun way to kind of explore what I want to make um, because I had a very specific outfit in mind, um, not like my fitting it into my whole wardrobe or anything, um, but it was a way to kind of be creative and, and make something really specific at the same time. Um, so that's something I'm kind of looking at in 2024. And I guess I want to just close, if you made it all the way to the end, um, and apologize again for like all the jump cuts. Um, 
I guess I just want to say thank you so much to the kind of supporting this channel by making your really lovely comments, um, by being a part of this journey for me and inspiring me so much, being part of that waterfall of inspiration at all sorts of different points and junctures. Um, and there's a few people I want to call out specifically. Um, first is my friend, my real life friend, Megan, who I found out was a knitter or she found out I was a knitter, um, through the power of the internet. And we actually know each other in real life because our kiddos go to the same school. And now I get to see her and her beautiful knits in real life. Um, and I got to see her at Rhinebeck too. Um, and then we had our awesome Bay area contingent. Um, so I just want to, she's so inspiring and, um, that's been a really, really wonderful gift of 2023 along with the friendships of um, Jackie and Carmen um, from Knitting a Good Yarn and Amy Palco from The Meaningful Stitch. Getting to meet them in person this year was so, so beautiful. Um, and Amy, uh, in particular, her work really inspired me to take the leap into podcasting almost two years ago. I would not have done it um, except for kind of a a throwaway line that she had in one of her podcasts, one of her very first podcasts, um, that made, that I was kind of rewatching and it kind of just gave me the confidence to, um, open up, um, the camera app on my iPhone and, um, and, and talk to, um, everyone and no one at the same time. And I want to thank, um, the uh, testing for Rebecca was also so fun and um, really, really a journey of uh, like an education. And I learned so much from both her and also the cohorts um, and everyone who I did make alongs with or knit alongs with, um, with for the Andrea Mowry knit along. And then also like knitting my sheep camp and being part of, you know, watching that hashtag and looking at projects on Ravelry. I guess for me, so much of what makes knitting joyful is doing it in community. And sometimes that community is in person, but very, very often for me, that community has been here on the interwebs. <laughs> and so I just want to say thank you again. I'm so appreciative of this space. I'm so appreciative of you. Please leave me um, any comments or questions down below. Let me know your thoughts, and I can't wait to share more with you in the year ahead. Thanks so much, and have a great day. Happy knitting. Bye.